Now let's deal with the topic choreography for critical interpretation of poems. Objectives are to realize about the deficiency of efferent reading in poetry, to apply response based approach to reading poetry, to know how choreography can be used as a tool to materialize reader response approach to poetry. We'll begin this class by addressing ourselves to a pedagogically significant question. Why do most high school students lose interest in poetry? Researchers have identified few reasons. First, the poems they encounter are basalized, inauthentic works. Second, they associate poetry with the torturous process of memorizing a poem for class testing or recitation. Third, they are instructed to find the meanings to poems for which they may search in vain. When students connect poetry with a painstaking examination, it is little wonder that they lose interest in poetry. It may be noted that the most widely practiced methodology of teaching poetry is influenced by traditional literary theory which focuses on two factors. Factor number one, the text or the author. Factor number two, the significant poetic elements, forms and common poetic devices. Consequently, the teachers are concerned mainly about whether students can discover the correct meaning of the text. They are discouraged from bringing any personal perspectives to interpret the poems. This approach is now widely recognized as a major factor for which causes students to consider the study of poetry unpleasant. At this juncture, it will be worthwhile discussing the two prevalent approaches to teaching poetry. One is the conventional critical interpretation approach and the other is the untraditional response based approach. The critical interpretation approach focuses on transmitting the knowledge of poetic conventions to students. It is believed that this will develop their capability of comprehending and evaluating literary merits. This precisely is the efferent stance toward the text. On the other hand, the response based approach underscores the aesthetic stance students take in appreciating poetry to generate a unique, personal and effective experience with literature. By bringing choreography into the language classroom, we have sought a solution to the problem. As we have seen in the previous lesson, choreographing a poem allows students to identify the theme and relate these to what they can experience in multiple ways. This in turn helps students gain interest in the poetry. As such, DOP promotes a reader response perspective towards the text. Engaging students emotionally in poetry is most valuable than their detached literary analysis. To quote Shen Fu Yuan, the reader should generate the lived through experience with the text instead of searching for the obscure, elusive and often ambiguous meanings within the text. In the following sessions, we will see how we apply the response based approach to teaching and learning poetry in William Blake's The Little Black Boy. Here is the poem, listen to the recital. The Little Black Boy My mother bore me in the southern wild, and I am black, but oh, my soul is white, white as an angel is the English child, but I am black as if bereaved of light. My mother taught me underneath a tree and sitting down before the heat of day, she took me on her lap and kissed me and pointing to the east began to say, Look on the rising sun, there God does live and gives his light and gives his heat away 
and flowers and trees and beasts and men receive comfort in morning joy in the noon day. And we are put on earth a little space that we may learn to bear the beams of love and these black bodies and this sunburnt face is but a cloud and like a shady grove. For when our souls have learned the heat to bear, the cloud will vanish, we shall hear his voice, saying, Come out from the grove, my love and care, and round my golden tent like lambs rejoice. Thus did my mother say and kiss me, and thus I say to little English boy, when I from black and he from white cloud free, and round the tent of God like lambs we joy. I'll shade him from the heat till he can bear to lean in joy upon our father's knee, and then I'll stand and stroke his silver hair and be like him and he will then love me. Let's have a glance at what critics have said about the poem. Most of the 80s criticism on The Little Black Boy centers on two aspects of the poem, race and religion. Critics who hone in on race include Googie Wa Thiongo, Stuart Crehan, Harriet Kramer Lincoln and Harold E. Plagiaro. In his 1981 collection of essays, Gugi Wa Thiongo's cities writers who have attempted to sympathetically treat the African world. He argues that, however sympathetic these writers may be, their efforts often represent a desire to smooth over the realities of racial conflict. For example, he sees in the ending of Blake's, The Little Black Boy, The White Liberal's Dream of a Day when black and white can love one another without going through the agony of violent reckoning. Crehan mentions that this poem shows Blake at his most Swedenborgian, especially in its symbolism as it prophesies a time of harmony when the spiritually superior black boy will have taught the white boy the ways of spiritual love. Harriet Kramer Lincoln's 1986 article analyzes how individual patterns of speech, which she calls idiolects, reveal how characters organize their thoughts. Lincoln argues that the mother and the child in The Little Black Boy use just such speech, implicating both mother and son in using childish language to construct a willfully, wishfully alternative version of reality. Lincoln argues that the poem demonstrates a breakdown between questions and answers. Although the mother explains why she and her son have black skin, the little black boy really wants to know why skin color is a source of hatred. In her lengthy 1986 article, Greco argues that Blake's poem demonstrates an oppressive mothering principle. Within her reading, the mother in the little black boy becomes a victim of what Blake regards as false Christian doctrine. Greco uses both the text and the illustrations of the little black boy to argue that the poem demonstrates the pernicious effects that the mother's false religious beliefs that is her beliefs in the duality of body and soul and the inherent evilness of the body have on her son. In his 1988 article, Ward first pays tribute to Leader's 1981 study of Blake, which among other things had warned readers against confusing Blake the poet with the various speakers he creates in his poetry. Ward then presents a reading of The Little Black Boy, in which he points out the dangers of the mother's lesson to her child to look ahead to heaven for consolation and reward. As Ward puts it, the terrible irony of the poem is that in doing this, she is aiding and abetting a system of oppression which ought to be destroyed. 
to 1990 discussions of the little black boy written in very different ways and with strikingly different conclusions to the issue of race relations. Hilton's 1990 discussion of the little black boy first emphasizes the presence in the poem of words with several possible meanings such as bore and beam, in particular his reading of the line. That way we may learn to bear the beams of love as evoking Christ on the cross beam from bomb is intriguing. Hilton then argues that the poem's ending shows that the black boy is just a shadow of the white, a slave to his mother's Sunday school fantasy. The poem demonstrates an entire system of encoding and operation as oppositions are glossed over and a little black boy makes himself the image of a white one. Alan Richardson's 1990 article first recapitulates previous critical views of the little black boy and then positions Blake's poem within the context of other late 18th and early 19th century anti-slavery poems. Richardson utilizes both the text and illustrations of the poem to support his central contention that the little black boy poses a critic of the colonialist discourse informing anti-slavery poems and tracts and offers a paradigm of resisting new forms of social discipline epitomized by industrial children's fiction and tracts for the lower orders, a popular literature imposed from the above. Donald Ault's 1990 article on The Little Black Boy attempts to connect the poem's twin concerns with racial and patriarchal issues. Ault asserts that the poem demonstrates a movement away from a bodily present real mother toward a utopian absent imaginary father. Ault argues that the disappearance of the mother at the end of the poem coincides with a pattern of visible grammatical or semantic destabilization and he painstakingly enumerates and explores the significance of these idiosyncrasies concluding that the poem may demonstrate how the emphasis on one form of oppression that is racial by the violence inherent in benevolent patriarchy implicates and obscures another more universal form the subordination of the feminine. Choreography can be used as a pedagogical tool to dramatize different interpretations of a given poem. How the student connects the theme with his or her life experience is vital to make sense of the poem. Let us watch the video of a classroom. The students have already read the poem individually and shared their reading experience in groups. Hello students, what is the theme of the poem? Yes. Color discrimination. Color discrimination. Anything else? Yeah. Marginalization. Are there any other themes? Mother's love. Mother's love. Faith in God. Faith in God. Hope in the future. Hope in the future. Good. Yeah, we have identified few positive notes in the poem. Uh, there are a few negative notes also there in the poem. So let us write this on the chart. The negative notes in the poem are the hardship of the black, then a struggle for survival and lack of pleasure in life. And the positive notes is love and affection of mother, faith in God and hope in life. Since the poem reflects both the positive and negative notes, we have to combine both for choreographing the poem. Now how we will plan for choreography based on this poem? We have to find out instances for each of the notes. Now for example, uh, what are the instances that will reveal the love and affection of the mother? Yes? Mother kisses the child. Mother kisses the child. Anything? Yes. She feeds the child. She feeds the child. Good. She rocks the cradle. She rocks the cradle. Good. 
Now like this we have to find out instances for the other nodes as well also. So the, all these are the positive nodes. Now for the negative nodes also we have to identify the instances. Yeah, now all the boys form one group and the girls the second group. You have to work and you have to present your presentation. Yeah, are you ready? Yes. Uh, what is your sub theme? Caste discrimination is our sub theme. Caste discrimination. Okay. Then uh, what instances you have identified? The temple priest does not allow a girl of a lower caste to enter the temple. Okay. Who are the characters involved in the action? The girl, a temple priest, a social worker, a few people. What are the actions to be performed? Will you present? Yeah. Our theme of the poem is cash discrimination and fight against the discrimination. Instance, the temple priest does not allow a girl of the lower caste to enter the temple. A social worker intervenes and takes the girl into the temple. Characters, the girl, the village priest, a social worker, a few people. Actions, the chorus creates the temple. A few, a few people enter the temple for worshipping. The girl approaches the temple gate. The priest coming from outside observes the girl preparing to enter the temple. He blocks the girl from entering the temple. The girl pleads before him. A few people gathered around. One person comes from the crowd and argues with the priest. He takes the girl inside the temple. Okay, good. Now group 2 can present their presentation. In this manner, all the groups can present their scripts for choreographing the poem. Feedback on the presentations will help them refine the script after which groups can go for presenting their choreographies of the poem. As we have seen, choreography can be used as an excellent pedagogical tool for helping students develop deeper understanding of the poem. They can create their own text from the poem that they read. Thank you.